So hello to everyone and welcome to the Seed Talks number five. So thank you very much for joining us today. My name is Nezhan Andrić and I want to welcome you on behalf of Young Ambassadors from Niche in uh, Serbia. These Seed Talks are part of our project uh, that we are doing together with Social Entrepreneurship Observatory from North Macedonia thanks to the support of Swedish Institute and Lund University. And every Thursday we are speaking about different parts of social entrepreneurship and social economy. So today we will speak about the needs and challenges of social enterprises. And uh, here today with me is also my colleague Stefan from Social Entrepreneurship Observatory, who would also like to welcome you. Uh, hi everyone, thank you for taking the time uh, to meet us at, at 5 p.m. basically. Uh, Michael, I think in Portugal is 4 p.m. if I'm right. Uh, for some it's lunch time, for some it's after work time. Uh, but thank you for, for, for spending the time here. And uh, also it should be known that this event will be recorded and it, it, it is live on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, so you can follow us on social media as well. Uh, I'm, St I'm Stefan Scholli from the Social Entrepreneurship Observatory. We are based in Skopje. We are working uh, towards uh, research and advocacy for social entrepreneurship ecosystem. We are mentoring, offering mentorship, uh, consultancy and technical support to social entrepreneurs and uh, social enterprises. And of course, we are um, consulting for other um, firms and uh, the financial partners and so on and so forth related to entrepreneurship and social entrepreneurship. Uh, I would not take a lot of time uh, introducing myself, so thank you for being here and uh, that's it for me for now. Thank you, Stefan. And as I mentioned before, our topic today is uh, needs and challenges of the social entrepreneurs and social enterprises. And we have a really great speaker today with us who are going to share their knowledge and their expertise. So today uh, we have Marta Brusci, Senior Manager, Network and Community Engagement from DSS Network from Belgium. But I think that Marta is now in London, if I am right. So we will have like yes, different yes. parts of the Europe here today. And also with us, we have today Mikhail Stevchev, is the CEO of uh, three banks from North Macedonia, but as Stefan says, he's now in Portugal. So <laughs> welcome to both of you. It was announced that uh, Nikola Matic from Pirate Art from Serbia will also be part of this, uh, uh, this webinar, but he wasn't able to join us today because of some personal issues, but I'm sure that we will have opportunity to hear Nikola very soon of some other event. So Marta and Michael, thank you very much for being with us today and welcome to our C Talks. Thank you. Nice to be here among friends. <laughs> yeah, great. I think that for the beginning, uh, it would be really great to hear uh, both of you to present us a little bit more what are you doing in the field of the social entrepreneurship and your organizations and uh, your enterprises. So maybe, Marta, we can start with you. Uh, yes, so hello. So um, I'm uh, representing Business Network here. So the, one of the widest um, networks, European networks for social economy in Europe and now even beyond. And uh, what we are doing, we are... Um, we are connecting people across Europe, across borders, um, mainly um, big uh, national federations and consortia uh, that are operating on the national regional level. And we are supporting them in uh, know-how uh, build, so knowledge, um, knowledge capacity, capacity building, and um, also making sure uh, that uh, we stay on top of, of the new trends and um, and how and, and see how the different ecosystem in Europe ecosystems in Europe uh, develop around just to um, to advance and uh, to be uh, to be uh, on top of different trends also in the in, in the economic area in general. And um, I'm responsible for um, for the network. So for sort of engagement between uh, all our members. So to make sure that all of the network sort of talk to each other and uh, meet on the regular basis and, uh, 
and that we uh, eventually create this um, great um, social social economic community. Thank you. Great, thank you very much, Marta. So, Michael, we can now go to you and hear more about your business. Hi, so my name is Michael. I'm the founder of Tree Banks. So basically, with Tree Banks, we solve the we try to gather funds for reforestation. So we're currently working in Macedonia. So far, we have planted around six uh, six five hundred trees, sixty five hundred trees. Uh, we use affiliate marketing to get the fundings. So we have partnerships with traveling platforms. So we have partnership with Booking, Kiwi, and Agoda so far. So that is our one vertical in order to uh, make a, have a stable like, uh, income. We also have our own, own merchandise that we sell from time to time whenever uh, we need to be afloat with our business. And we also had the one small upcycling project. So we created the Christmas trees decorations from all doors. So basically that is it. Uh, the company, the, the social enterprise have, has been active for two years. And that's pretty much it. Thank right. you. <laughs> yeah, really nice initiative. <laughs> Okay, thank you. And then I think that we can now start with the discussion. But before it, I just want to invite everyone that are following us here on Zoom or on our Facebook pages. You can ask questions for all the speakers. So write in comments in chat here in comments on social media. And then we, after the discussion, the speakers are going to answer the questions. So please feel free to ask everything that you think it's important for you. Uh, great. Yes, and follow us on social media as well and, and share and this link of uh, Zoom video, YouTube, and on Facebook. Uh, okay, guys, now let's talk social entrepreneurship, right? So uh, the first round is from me. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I will start with Marta. Uh, and uh, can you tell us from your experience in the network, mm -hmm. uh, what are the biggest challenges, the challenges that social entre entrepreneurs face? Okay, um, so uh, because as you know, um, our network um, is not supporting directly social entrepreneurs, but, but we are supporting sort of um, indirectly. So meaning that uh, uh, we are sort of in that, in that mid level when we are providing a support to the organizations that are then um, um, giving services to, to beneficiaries, so to social entrepreneurs. And throughout, um, throughout the entire um, sort of my last the last ten years of, of work, so my entire entire career, I was um, I was um, managing different programs that uh, that uh, provided the capacity building, but also capacity building for social entrepreneurs, for example, like uh, and also exchange programs like Erasmus for Young Entrepreneurs. And I think that um, what I've seen, uh, what I've seen from the from my experience is that um, I think it's very it's very challenging for um, for social entrepreneurs actually to develop a really good idea at the beginning. So the concept, like what would you like to to find a solution on 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 which which problem so i think that and how to how do you want to make it sustainable because i think that at the end um, at the end uh, this will impact uh, this will impact other uh, other other sort of uh, steps in in the in on that, on that entrepreneurial path so uh, for example i think that the, the biggest challenge is really to for the social entrepreneur at the beginning to understand the um, the, the the root cause of the problem and um, and then sort of to make that um, to make the whole idea of 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 uh, of, of your business really um, tangible and what for social entrepre entrepreneurs is quite difficult because we we want the, the first thing that you think is, is is an impact, but also to make it to make it sustainable. So how do you see it that after after years? Uh, it will still uh, create impact and you will be still existing on the market, right? So I think that this is one of the biggest challenges. The another, uh, the biggest challenge at the beginning of your path. And then of course, um, 
uh, going forward is of course raising um, the capital. So I think that this is the most challenging. So really, uh, how to how to finance your your enterprise your enterprise because we know that um, you know if you go to a venture capitalist, uh, you see um, that they want really a very rapid and large growth which is not something that for social entrepreneur that social entrepreneur uh, can promise right to deliver so um so to really to to raise the investment capital is quite it's quite a path a turbulent path for social entrepreneur because that means that you will have to find a different sources um, of um, of that capital, so going to crowd, doing crowdfunding, but also you know looking at the different grounds, and it means that you will have to have a sort of a large number of small investors, and you will have to sort of also report to them, and that that also um, goes with uh, you know that you will have to agree on different things, and that can restrain your flexibility as an entrepreneur. So I think that yeah, and then. Third thing that I think that is very very challenging for entrepreneurs is to to scale up. So um, how how will you how will you grow? How you will make sure that um, after that big the, the the beginning phase you will uh, uh, still keep after two years, after three years, after four years you will still you will still be able to deliver the impact and you will be still afloat as a um, as an entrepreneur, I think those are the biggest challenges. And of course, then further, if you after scaling up, scaling up, there are all different steps like, uh, yeah, um, growing. So making that transition from being a very small entrepreneur to to grow up your organization, and it, it comes about uh, not only about the structure, but also about the team, about the mission. And, and about um, going into different partnerships. So those are other challenges that are go that are, that are come a little bit further on on the on the pathway to as a social entrepreneur. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Marta. I think that you've uh, basically explained the whole process of initiation phase until yeah. growing, right? So um, the conclusion here is that. Uh, you have challenges in every area along the way, uh, but it's not that it's not that uh, let's say difficult or not, not that scary. Uh, it is difficult, but not that scary. Um, so going from understanding the root of the problem to funding to basically making compromise about your ideas and um, partnerships and networking, scale up impact, and of course. Uh, then the next logical step would be growing. But let's hear from Mikhail now, uh, what are the challenges that he has faced with three banks? Uh, well, basically reflecting on what Marta said, but also from your own experience. What are the biggest challenges that you have faced in relation to the three banks work? Well, there are some, I don't know how to say, uh, different challenges on different aspects of what we do. So uh, let's say from the main challenge that we faced last year was the COVID pandemic because our business was the biggest vertical that we were having income was from affiliate from travel uh, travels. So there was a point that uh, uh, we reached zero conversions on that vertical. And at, uh, the thing is that our expenses are very low because we don't do anything besides our website. So we don't have many operational expenses and we can manage without income. So that was not big problematic, but we needed to show uh, improvements because we need to show uh, that we raised the numbers that we are going to plant more trees. And the whole whole timeline for 2020 was crushed in one week. So we had like very big start. We wanted to start to, to I don't know, raise our uh, newsletter subscriptions to 10K. And then we promote the partnerships and we wanted to grow, uh, have a growth for 10, time, uh, multiple, 10 times in a year. But all of this was destroyed by the, by the pandemic. So besides that, as I mentioned that we have multiple verticals, we uh, sell some 
uh, actually this will be in the later in the question. So that is that was a big challenge. Uh, the other challenge was uh, to make the, it's a bit offline challenge to make the stakeholders in our country trust us that uh, we are not their enemy. Uh, because here, uh, when you stretch the surface on, I don't know, any, any field, uh, 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 our business does reforestations, they're scared. Uh, instead of uh, to become friends with us, they see us as an enemy. So uh, that was one of the challenges that we had. And uh, one of the other mo most common challenge that I think every social entrepreneur has is to uh, raise aver awareness of, about the problem that is solving. So uh, most of the people that are doing this, uh, are doing social entrepreneurship, think that their problem is the most important thing. And everyone uh, per se should believe them and should uh, have the same views as them. So we didn't face this challenge, but I think it's a big challenge to know up front because uh, those are the, the people that in the future will become your partners. Um, let's see what are the other challenges that we face are, let's say, more uh, uh, platform or uh, oriented because we don't have the good infrastructure for doing online business in Macedonia. So we had a lot of limitations of our ideas that we want to, to do in order to gather fund, fundings. So I will speak later uh, uh, how, what are those and that kind of things. Because for example, if we want, uh, as you mentioned that we can go crowdfunding or do anything in Macedonia, we cannot do it because Kickstarter and GoFundMe are not available. So uh, that is a very big challenge. Uh, also, international payment systems are not available, so we cannot uh, get money from everywhere in the world, although we can spread ourselves, but we cannot make direct transactions. So uh, this is a very big challenge for not for only social entrepreneurs, but for all startup entrepreneurs per se uh, coming from, uh, I think, most of the Balkan countries, which are not are non EU. So I think also this can be, I don't know, multiplied uh, uh, or frameworked in other countries. So uh, around that they have the same issues. Uh, I don't know, let's see what other challenges. And uh, at the beginning, it was the trust. So when we were initially starting, people didn't trust us, but we were aware that uh, for this, it takes time and persistence. So now we are at the stage that uh, we're the first, uh, that was our, our, our goal in the first years when people think about tree planting to th think about us. And there was a big challenge uh, because we wanted to sound like we can do uh, miracles, but there was some previous history locally in the, uh, let's say in Macedonia that made the tree planting negative because uh, let's say there is a history that uh, some governments uh, did failed projects. And at the beginning, all of this, all of the people were comparing us to them. Mm. So we needed to pivot our, uh, let's say our goals to make them more uh, small. So we can say that we're not going to, uh, I don't know, plant 1 million trees in one year that we can, I don't know, do that in 10 years or 15 years. So that was a pivot of uh, our identity that we did. So I think that was pretty much one of the challenges, but the biggest challenge, I think for it's that we come from a country that doesn't have good infrastructure for online businesses. And that will, I think, remain like this for the next five or 10 years. So. Yeah, indeed. I was wanted just to follow about this trust uh, that Mikhail said. Um, I remember remember when uh, some time ago, some times ago, I visited um, some of our members, for instance, in Scotland, when, when social entrepreneurship is amazingly developed and the whole infrastructure is just uh, working uh, how, it, how it should work. It's like uh, the, 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 the best practice, I think, in, in the entire world. But um, 
what they were, uh, what what I always um, saw uh, at the, um, when, while talking to social entrepreneurs is that um, they said, "Yeah, we never um, we never sold our business as something um, that as a primary something that has a social impact. We always we were always selling the business our uh, our business as as uh, uh, something that um, brings." quality right so so those like the first thing was to think uh, think about okay we've got a very good quality product or the service and then that's how we were uh, sort of gaining trust of of the customers how you do it in a in a in a, in a normal business and then as a the, the the social impact the social component was as an added value and then that um most of the time um sort of help to maintain those clients and even to look further and research and stay with them because yeah that was the one of the element that they liked uh, rather than going into them into the um, competitors so yeah this building trust it's of course it takes time uh because as i said uh, first you need to demonstrate that you uh that your product is good and that takes time and then uh, promote it, and and then also build relationship between between the customers or whatever and um, the, the beneficiaries that 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 are getting your services. Yeah. So just to add up to to your comment, uh, mm -hmm. so I always try to say to fellow social entrepreneurship entrepreneurs or people that are starting that their product, whatever it is, it's the first. Uh, the yeah. social problem is second because uh, the, the added value that you said uh, comes later. It doesn't come at the beginning. If someone buys your product uh, for the added value, your product is useless. It's better to request, just give me $5. So, no, no, because... I totally, yeah, exactly. I totally <laughs> so, agree. Yeah. So, so uh, this we had, uh, I will just give short example with our mm -hmm. t-shirts. So, Everyone does merchandise. So in the world, it's quite easy. Uh, you have uh, uh, drop shipping services that you can use and you can do t-shirts everywhere in the world. But for Macedonia, we, when we designed it, uh, we uh, made special uh, analysis about how to do it. So we were one of the first brands that have special uh, woman t-shirts. And everyone was amazed how come we have a uh, woman t-shirts and also the quality of the cotton and everything was let's say it's it still is sorry uh, it's three or four times better than what you what all the let's say event t-shirts are sold so uh that and i say to this that was our goal our t-shirts to be the product not that we will plant a tree for the t-shirts to be the the product so what we had, uh, uh, what, what is our experience? We had people that were giving us a feedback that they wear their t-shirts for whole of the year or they called us to uh, order for more or something like that. So I agree with what you say that the product uh, and what I say it's uh, you, when no matter that is social entrepreneurship, it's just a company like a regular company. Uh, it, it works with the same rules. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Marta, go on. No, no, exactly. I'm, I'm just, um, just you know, going back to really to um, to that first stage of of uh, researching what you really want to do. I think it's really, really important that that you research it well. That you really find uh, find the gap and find the, the 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 real solutions. You sort of you interview your community. You look around. You look for those critical friends, and to you know to share your idea and see see whether whether this idea would really work. Like do you know test it on yourself, test it on your family, test it on on, on friends because this is really important that that sort of it grows and it matures in you so that you make sure that 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 it it will work and um yeah because i mean we you can have you know the, the concept but it can be quite empty so it's and i've seen it i've seen it a lot when when it dies out somewhere you know in the second stage of of conceptualizing you know the idea so yeah 
this is important. Uh, excellent. Uh, we've chosen excellent topic and it's a broad topic, of course. Uh, every entrepreneur faces different challenges. And uh, absolutely, I can I can be one of the testimonials for, for the t-shirts from three banks. <laughs> exactly. and you can also, me too. You can also see me in them on, on these events. Like the first <laughs> webinar, I, I think I, I wear the, the three banks uh, t-shirt. I would wear it now, but it will be, it will look like I'm in a uniform for some <laughs> <laughs> because I, I should not wear it every day, right? Uh, on a, on every event, but I agree that uh, research is critical and uh, you should test. Everybody should test the, their idea because uh, not you will not hear comments that you would like, and exactly. you will know how to to improve your idea and. Uh, yeah, but, but I agree with also with, with Michael that uh, trust is a big issue in uh, our region uh, because we have seen many failed uh, projects with uh, great funding, for yeah. example. But uh, what is great uh, about three banks and also about other social enterprises in the region that, uh, that are working with tangible results. So you can see the result. For example, if, if you buy a hundred t-shirts or you go to a trip through booking and uh, use Tribank's affiliate marketing to do that, you can see that a trip is being planted somewhere and you can be a part of that um, activity as well as a volunteer, of course. So you can help them do that. Uh, so yeah, thank you for that. And uh, I think that we have spread this topic all around. Snezana, can you continue? Yeah, I'm very yes. sorry because every now and then my video is just switching off. I don't know why, so I'm sorry for this. This 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 <laughs> that I disturb. I don't know why it's it's happening like this. It's okay. Yeah. No, no, we can it's see not, you now. It's not intentionally. It's just every now and then it switches off. I don't know why. Okay, sorry. Go on, Snida. Yeah, yeah. So you were think, speaking about the, all the challenges that they are facing, and since as you know, our like. Uh, main group that are following our webinars are young entrepreneurs, the ones who are going to be social entrepreneurs. So to make them uh, to be more encouraged to become it, maybe to speak about their needs and how maybe all the institutions, organizations can help them in answering these needs. So maybe Marta, you mentioned in the beginning what the SS Network is doing in this field, how you are working with the social enterprises but uh, maybe can you give us a little bit more about your work in uh, which way you are helping them in answering their needs or how you are directly working uh, with the social enterprise? Okay, so um, yeah, uh, so as I, as I said, um, we are mostly, um, we, we focus being European network, we mostly focus on, on our sort of uh, pan, European work, so working across uh, working across borders, and um, what we what we what we are trying mainly to achieve is to really to connect uh, social social economy actors and social entrepreneurs um, across borders, so that they can really learn from each other, so get the ideas from other countries to see how it's it can be done to replicate. Uh, to uh, to innovate together. So we've got. I'm not going. I'm not going to go in in uh, in in um, in the details of the project. But we've got a couple of projects running um, together with with not only with our members but with our European organizations from different different countries that are sort of. Um, in terms of, for example, in terms of youth, uh, we are providing uh, some trainings for the um, entrepreneurial competences. So really how to enhance the, the um, entrepreneurial competences among youth. And that is always, um, uh, that is always a series of trainings that we provide in the smaller groups. Of course, now everything is online. And that has to do with uh, with uh, it depends which country we we've got in the in the projects, but it's mostly mostly European countries from from sort of representatives of different regions, and um, so for example we uh, we we did um, the pitching sessions, so really to train uh, you young entrepreneurs how to pitch well. 
uh, by inviting also some um, experts in uh, in giving them uh, basically really a simple feedback how to sell your uh, your your business well, and then other part of um, of of those projects are is also networking. So really. Uh, setting up networking events so that people really can talk to each other uh, based on topics or experience and, and see how they can really uh, learn from each other ideas or maybe also a grow idea. So one of the projects, for example, now um, has come up with the sort of kit where where you can where you can find uh, sort of a, a guidance how to um, uh, yeah, how to conceptualize your idea and how this idea can grow to uh, to be a potential um, to, to set up a potential uh, social business with social impact. Then, on the other hand, we've got we've got also uh, projects that are focusing more on um, um, supporting youth workers in uh, in different countries. Um, in the creative and um, in creative industry, and uh, so um, really, here we are more looking at um, at youth workers in different countries and providing them uh, capacity building. So how how they can really uh, help other young people to uh, to grow and and to sort of develop maybe sometimes sometimes their hobbies into really into business and how to uh, to uh, to help also vulnerable people because we know that for arts and, and, and creative industry uh, there's there's a lot of uh, help um, to um, marginalize people and and um, and sort of vulnerable groups of, of the society so we are working with different creative hubs also in in europe then another part of of work that we are doing is more on the um on the raising awareness level so also uh, we help to to raise the awareness of social entrepreneurship in different parts of europe but also to um to work together with support organizations in different in different parts of Europe to make sure that um, that sort of environment um, is, is more and more friendly, uh, friendly for for social entrepreneurs, because we know that there is a lot of constraints and not in, and it's it starts starting from the legal frameworks because you know there's a lot of uh, in many countries there's a lot of problems to find like what is actually the the um, the setup of, of my organization what what legally speaking so um, so we are also working on that level to help um, to help public officials but also support organizations to make that environment. Uh, more friendly and to to enable those social entrepreneurs to 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 find the gap and and to grow so yeah so this is um as i said um our our work is like, like a cascade so we help others so that others can help social entrepreneurs so um yeah but but it's still uh, i think that it's still something that uh, uh it, it's worth looking at and it's something that that's that that we are quite proud of yeah and you definitely should be proud of the all the work that you are doing in the whole europe and yeah it is really important all these different directions that you mentioned which you are yeah. working to support if not social entrepreneurs itself but the organizations which are working with them and this is really important also to mention to all of us who are following today from Serbia or from North Macedonia that, of course, they can in Serbia, they can approach us in young ambassadors if they want to participate in all these capacity buildings and trainings and events that uh, the SS Network is organizing. You also have members in North Macedonia. So it is really important the, all the work that you are doing in, with the Western Balkan countries in different projects. So. And also, actually, actually, in our recent recent project of Erasmus Plus, which we started also with uh, with uh, with the ambassadors, and 
uh, will now we are at the stage of the research, but there will be a lot of trainings that we will have we will we will provide to to the directly young people in uh, different parts of of Western Balkans because this one this project is very much uh, focused on Western Balkans, so Monten uh, basically in North Macedonia and Montenegro. But uh, yeah, through those capacity building programs. Um, I think that this is the really um, amazing opportunity for, for young people to connect with each other and really to, to be in one place, to, to exchange those ideas and, and to help each other as well. Because I mean, we, we, we can't know everything, you know? So, uh, you know, looking for some advice and, and, uh, and looking for, for different expertise and even to find the potential partners this is this is the way how you do it. That's why I'm always stressing that um, really uh, uh, connecting with other people, whether it's online, whether you know different events. This is this is the source of 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 the inspiration. Always the source of all different partnerships that are that are there, and you don't even you don't even expect. And I experienced so many times. Uh, doing doing those events that uh, that this is this is the power of of human being actually to meet and talk exchange learn and again learn and again meet and talk yeah <laughs> yeah absolutely uh, at the end the networking is the most important thank you thank you very much Marta and uh, Michael as a social entrepreneur so when you are speaking about your biggest needs and uh, in relation to the work that your uh, business is uh, doing and working, what are what would you say? What are your needs at the moment? Our needs, our needs is very uh, one word that means very many things. It's infrastructure. Mm. So. Uh, infrastructure it's one of the most important thing that no one is saying when they speak about social entrepreneurship yeah. and entrepreneurship for countries which don't have ready legislation or they're filled with old bureaucracy so infrastructure if anyone wants to to help the people like i am or the many others that are trying even with regular businesses which are not standard businesses like uh, or which are working online or they're uh, doing something creative, uh, we need infrastructure. Or for example, I don't know, you, you have heard about NFTs at the moment. So they are very, uh, you can uh, sell virtual, I don't know, image on blockchain and people can, I don't know, uh, pay money for it. And they will have the unique uh, online token about your, image art or whatever so we wanted to use that to pivot our idea and to have to i don't know uh, another vertical so we can make it i don't know little children right uh, paint pictures and we sell them online and all of those things but we cannot do this because of infrastructure so uh, the, the biggest need in many fields is infrastructure so uh, we just pivoted a bit our business. It's not uh, yet announced. It will be announced probably in one month or three weeks. So we, uh, in order to get, uh, I don't know, international donation uh, in Macedonia, we go through some bureaucracy, which I am not willing to explain. So I will not say anything else about needs uh, or anything everything can be overcome but infrastructure it's very uh, long and slow process even when the stakeholders that are deciding about that infrastructural changes are from uh, different uh, years or then it's even harder so and even uh, I don't know, for a small market like Macedonia, it's, it's even funny why uh, we're not changing uh, and evolving fast. So for me, I will say again, it's infrastructure because I don't know, the progress of getting an online payment system is long and everywhere in the world is one click. So that's why uh, the biggest need for me personally as a uh, um, social entrepreneur 
and even as a regular entrepreneur, it's infrastructure. Because, uh, for example, I had a different idea. It's called Bank of Trees. Uh, we like the trees and banks to mix them together. So in order my business to be possible, when I started making the plans, I planned incorporation in Europe. So I will not have all of these uh, infrastructure problems. But for a business that starts, that is a big uh, burn rate from the beginnings. So that's why I think infrastructure, it's one of the most important thing or the biggest need for me as a social entrepreneur that I have. So I don't need a, a convertible loan. For me, it's useless because who will invest in in me with convertible loan in Macedonia. I need just a simple infrastructure that uh, everywhere, let's say everywhere, uh, it's one click to, to get it. So that's the biggest need that I, I, per, I can personally say. Yeah, and uh, I think that for all these uh, previous four webinars, we were speaking about different problems and challenges. And at the end, everything is, uh, on the stakeholders and their decisions. So I think that for some of the next C talks, definitely we should gather together all the stakeholders from the Western Balkan countries and to speak what they actually can done and change uh, in this field. So thank you, thank you, Michael, very much. Yeah, thank you very much for this because it's also very interesting for me to 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 hear from you that you are really you know when when you are facing those very practical you know challenges because uh, obviously I'm, I'm 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 seeing all a little bit from the bird eye view what's happening in all different <laughs> on different sites or different regions but um, this is very also a good lesson learned for me listening to you. Uh, so, so if I add some things like uh, regarding challenges so mm -hmm. we first our biggest challenge at the beginning was um, getting permit for planting. So we read all the laws, like you mentioned, the law and bureaucracy, uh, and we decided that we will make a framework uh, how to apply. So now at this stage, we don't, we have that issue, but with our framework, we sort of uh, uh, made our position to ourselves that when people need permit, they ask us first, instead of going to, to the administration. So at the beginning, when uh, some of the stakeholders didn't know what kind of document to give us. So now when we have the framework, we say, okay, this gave us, gave, gave this document to us. So can you make the same? And it's getting better and better. So uh, in my ideal world, it would be, okay, this guy wants to, uh, plant trees uh, let's make everything easy for him instead of let's make everything hard for him so we when we even started we said that we will comply to everything and with the strategy that that uh, the country has so but again we we get uh, we got a big friction so that's why i will say infrastructure is one of the the most important things uh Thank you, Michael. Uh, to add to this, uh, yeah, it, it is because we are also a supporting organization for social enterprises. Uh, we have also our own economic activities. We have courses for social entrepreneurship at the observatory. And uh, here comes the infrastructure part that Michael said um, for us to implement an uh, electronic system that for payment. Uh, took us about uh, three or four months, basically, but being always on the phone with the banks. So it is not something that uh, an, a new entrepreneur or a social entrepreneur, uh, basically a, a person who opens business should do when things are just starting up. You do not have four months to be on the phone with the banks. You don't have four months to negotiate with them on, on their percentages, their quotas and whatever. You know, so this is one part. Uh, on the other hand, uh, many social entrepreneurs, when talk, they talk to us, they say that uh, the traditional mindset of the institutions in the region 
And I'm, I'm not saying only in Macedonia, but I'm saying also in, in Kosovo was like that, in Serbia as well, Croatia, even though if it's in, in, in EU, the bureaucracy is overwhelming and uh, the traditional mindset of the institutions is also an issue. So, uh, and the culture, of course, uh, we are coming back to the rapport with your clients and beneficiaries, right? So at this end, uh, I agree with Michael that infrastructure is crucial for the development of the sector, but also to help social entrepreneurs. So thank you for that. Uh, because we were talking, so DSS is a network, right? So uh, Marta, can you tell us about the good examples of cooperation between social entrepreneurs from different European countries? Uh, maybe from your from the network's projects or something like that, who helped them to overcome some challenges? Um, I mean, I've, I've have, uh, I have a couple of examples, but um, I think that uh, what I wanted, what I wanted, for example, to um, to tell you is about uh, um, about the project that uh, that that we're participating in um, together with um, Oxfam Italy in the MENA region, so uh, in the Mediterranean North African region. I think that uh, this is uh, going a little bit beyond Europe, but uh, but it's worth to to mention it because. Um, I think we uh, what we've done there. We we looked at uh, so the North African countries um, are um, relatively new to social entrepreneurship, and also in all different uh, on those different countries, the the legal fr frameworks don't work, or they they are not yet there, or they are yeah, or they are in the making, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And we were um, we are there in touch with. Uh, um, support organizations in different countries, organizations that support social entre entrepreneurs, and I think um, what what went well in that uh, in that project is that we uh, looked um, how the the whole experience, like the European experience, uh, the, the 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 whole sort of tradition, the quite long tradition of social entrepreneurship in Western Europe. How 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 we can capitalize and how we can bring that experience, you know, into those north 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 African countries and vice versa, and um, that was that was a nice and, and we we had there a lot of peer to peer learning and peer exchange and peer review, and uh, what it, what what we've done there we matched basically. Um, peers from, from African countries, uh, North African countries with European countries. Um, so really on one-to-one -one basis. And so they had time to work with each other and to compare and to learn from each other where, how, how, um, how they can take some ideas and, and fill in the gaps in, in, in their um, different system that, that, you know, that, that find the solutions. For those for those challenges, but also uh, what was interesting that we um, also connected them between each other. So really, uh, not doing north south, but also south south. So in between countries in North Africa, and that's and and that was that was really amazing because um, being really uh, uh, next to each other, they they haven't talked to each other. So the regionally there was the regionally there was there was no cooperation where. You know it's, it's quite surprising but uh, i think that helped them also a lot because they were able more to understand each other and those challenges that they have because their sort of ecosystem goes parallel so i think that's um uh, a sort of developed parallel so um i think that this um this also showed that this regional uh, cooperation uh, or our regional partnerships uh, between between different different countries is also very important also because um, it's you know it it gives the base it gives the basis to actually improve that infrastructure that Mikhail said right because if you if you raise the awareness and if you if you if you start to change the mindset of people then it's it, it has a sort of it has an, another sort of uh, effect you know 
and then uh, and then it brings to to changing that infrastructure and to ease up and to ease up some different uh, different um, how do you say it um, things to 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 make your work, Mikhail, much easier. So um, for us, for us as a network, it's really it's really important to um, to to really to be observer and just to to con to connect those different actors from ecosystems and not only the support organizations, not only the people that are supporting the social entrepreneurs, but also the also from different different actors from uh, um, you know as such as policymakers, such as officials, because this is all about changing that mindset, changing that machine that eventually will help social entrepreneurs to, 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 to make your work better and easier. And it's, uh, it's, it's, a, long, it's a long process, but um, of course, as, as everywhere. But this is our main focus for, for, the, for the SS network, just to, 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 to really um, connect those different actors in those ecosystems. And yeah, for them, as I said, for them, the social entrepreneurs um, as a beneficiaries, they, they will benefit from this sort of as a as a next step from all the activities that we make on that meso level. Uh, thank you, Marta. I think that um, these experiences from all over the world uh, provide us with best cases, lessons learned, and role models uh, to show to, to new and upcoming social entrepreneurs, right? And uh, basically provide them with uh, some kind of examples of what's wrong and what's right and what they should do and uh, what they should learn. Yeah, but also to make to um, I think it's also important to find a good match. So if you if you do peer to peer learning, if you do peer exchange, if you do any um, mentoring programs, I think it's really, really crucial to to find that good match. So to make sure that they really can can, um, you know, people can learn from each other, because if you take a person who, who comes from from a very uh, evolved and very much developed ecosystem with someone who is really at the beginning of that path, then there's no sense because, uh, because, because you know, the, the difference is too big. The, the key is to find a to find, um, person that they can sort of, uh, or entrepreneurs that they can uh, really complement each other. And, you know, so that the that, that knowledge and know-how sharing goes both directions and, and it's, it's, it, it doesn't go from top to bottom or one way so i think this is the this is the this is the most important this is what i'm always looking while 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 you know uh, looking at the activities of like peer-to-peer -peer learning peer 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 exchange and mm -hmm. and mentoring yeah uh, yeah, I agree that the context is very important and yeah. if somebody is coming from a more developed context and a more advanced context, let's say, then it's not a good match with somebody who is just beginning. Yeah. I agree on that. Uh, but I also think that uh, these matches should be a way of, of learning things and uh, develop, pro oh, yeah. providing the opportunity to develop faster from those who are coming from the developing countries or those who are in transition or do not have a conducive ecosystem yet. Uh, and they, have, they, they can learn and adapt, you know. So, yeah. mm -hmm. Very true, but it's sometimes it's also sometimes it's also very important that you go through the entire process, you know, of mm -hmm. development, all of the stages instead of uh, skipping one or two stages because this is how you, this is this is how you learn. This is the you know this that learning cycle that that really provides you that um, experience and mm -hmm. you build resilience and strength. So. There's also sort of both sides of the coins, you know. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's difficult. Yeah. It's the, the the key is to find the balance in between. I think. Yeah. yeah. I agree. Balance is the most difficult thing to find uh, <laughs> in, in whatever you do, right? Whatever you do, yeah. Uh, so let's jump to Michael uh, and uh, to hear from a social entrepreneur. Okay. Michael, what would what would uh, be your solution? basically to maybe the problem of infrastructure or the the challenges that you face have you found a solution of some kind for some of these challenges that you faced uh for the some of the there is always a solution uh you can but it depends if the solution pays off so sometimes the you can uh, have uh 
you can gain more value without implementing the solution. Mm -hmm. uh, because if you, I don't know, in your case, you lose three months uh, exchanging emails to set up an online payment, uh, you can be more valuable digging holes for my trees, you know, mm -hmm. so in at the end. So uh, this is just a, a small relativization from my side, but there is yeah, always... But, but it's a proper the, example, right? But it's a proper uh, example. Uh, you can use your time for something better to achieve yes, something better yes. and uh, when you spend three months on something that maybe so, doesn't pay off yeah so for uh, most of the things that we uh, we faced at the beginning we uh, we found our own solutions and we analyzed how we can approach them uh, and so far we successfully implemented them so one example is we we were at the beginning we were rejected at the biggest stakeholder that gives permits. Uh, we said you don't need to mess with our work. We do it okay, and we said okay, let's be vote. And then we started from the outside. So instead of going national, we went local and we used some personal connections, and we ended up uh, having uh, the biggest planting on national ground. So. Uh, but uh, as I said, it depends that not, uh, I'm, I'm a true believer that you can find a solution for everything, uh, when you face even, I don't, for example, I don't mind bureaucracy, but when the bureaucracy, uh, it's straight, you tell me what I need to do from the beginning, I will do everything. But, uh, if in the middle, uh, you changed what I need to do, then it's a problem. I, although I don't mind bureaucracy, if you tell me at start that I will lose three months to set up my payment gateway, I will plan it and I will make the, the whole timeline based on that. But after three months, if I'm still not ready, then it's a problem. So that uh, regarding the infrastructure, I think uh, that's, um, uh, let's say, identity that the country needs to set. So it needs to come from the top. I always discuss this with fellow uh, entrepreneurs or maybe even people that live in Macedonia. I think it, come, it needs to come from the top. Uh, and my logic about this is because we are late, adopt we are late adopters uh, as a country uh, in general, not uh -huh. like, uh, I don't know, I think the percentage of late adopters is very big because we first wait to see what will happen to our, I don't know, our neighbor that li lives next door, then we try it. So we're example driven. So I don't know, you can see if someone order his kitchen, other people are ordering the same because he ordered it. So that is the, I don't know, acting as a pack. So that's why I think the infrastructural changes needs to come from the top. So the top is the highest position in the country and going down because uh, the other way, uh, it's almost impossible to go because whoever is on the top, the others will follow. Uh, and uh, that is my view. Uh, and if we want these things to be improved in infrastructurally, I think someone from the top needs to want, want that to be done. Otherwise, the process will be very long. And it will be usually how things are handled uh, here. It's we cannot do anything now. We must do it that we do it. So that's maybe after 10 years, we must do it now and we do it. There is no other thing. But for faster, uh, let's say uh, for a bigger jump in improvements, uh, we need it, the changes needs to come from the top. Uh, no matter if it's a policy or on identity level. level. And I said this example uh, to many people that can uh, say to the uh, biggest stakeholders, the, the, the biggest example, let's say in ecology, is uh, someone from the top to go out and publicly say, we will not use small plastic uh, spoons in the coffee bars. And if it, that works, everything can be changed. But we need to, uh, we can test my hypothesis with just that. Because by law, at the moment, uh, they're forbidden, but you can see them everywhere they're used. So 
that is my that are my two cents how we can improve the infrastructure it's wild idea but maybe it will work i don't know um the most wild, the wildest ideas uh, are those who work and those who make the change right uh, we can see that often uh, from time to time and uh, also uh, i want i, I shared uh, links here in in the zoom chat uh, because the case of three banks and how they are going around their challenges and their problems can be seen in the voice of entrepreneurs and innovators a publication that we've made last year uh, explaining their basically are five case studies from uh, Macedonia and from Kosovo uh, from social entrepreneurs who are working on, on various issues, right? So the Tribanks case is there, but also uh, we have the another publication, which is COVID-19 effects on entrepreneurs and innovations, which was a follow-up publication uh, based on these case studies and uh, involving them I, maybe nine months. Michael, I think it was nine, it was nine months after yeah, uh, yeah, in October or something. In October like or something last year, when we've done this to 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 see the effects. Uh, this is a very interesting topic, and we can stand uh, stay here and basically talk for for hours on this because it's a it's an interesting way not only not only for social entrepreneurs or entrepreneurs, but also for everybody who wants to uh, start an initiative or start a business or uh, basically go around a problem. Uh, so I think that, that it will be worth it. Uh, thanks for that. Ms. Nezana? Yeah, and as you, Stefan, mentioned, yeah, we want to like uh, send a message to all the young people who are maybe thinking now how to start a business or maybe not sure what is the social business and how to start it. So we are really trying to uh, have a different uh, perspective from the, this topic and uh, not trying to scare them, but really to encourage them to start some initiative and to be brave enough to start their business. So maybe since we are at the end of our conversation today, but we want also to hear from you. So if we are speaking about young people, potential social entrepreneurs or the, some new social entrepreneurs, and uh, maybe your proposal and your solutions, how to make uh, their way easier, in starting their business, but also we want uh, to hear from you your message for them. So please encourage them to dream big and to think about their social innovations and their social businesses. So Marta, maybe we can start again with you. So what do you think, how we can make easier the way of new and uh, young social entrepreneurs and what would be your message for them? I think for the, yeah, for them, particularly for, for, for your region, I think uh, the, the, key, the, the key thing is really to, to, to raise awareness, to, to raise them um, sort of the profile of social entrepreneurship, you know, because uh, this, this all takes already quite a long time and then let alone uh, the, the entire infrastructure and supporting a circle that that uh, that we have to build around and so yeah changing mindset and make uh, make people um and sort of encourage uh, the capacity to lead you know um business with, with social impact and and also make sure that um those young entrepreneurs they've got um they've got sort of very very basic skills as well in, in leading the, the enterprise, not, not really a social enterprise, but enterprise. So look, looking at uh, financial skills, looking at organizational skills, looking how to even, you know, how to, how to collaborate, how to, how to go into partnerships, how to sell, because those, I mean, if you, if you don't have those, those basic skills, uh, then, then yeah this is this is the starting point of, of every every business and um, I think that this is one thing the second thing is to um, seize the momentum because um, I think now uh, because because of COVID or due to COVID or thanks to COVID uh, social entrepreneurship uh, social enterprises are are in the in the spotlight you know because uh, because we've seen that we, we we can that social entrepreneurs entrepreneurs are innovative 
they can transform communities and um, they've got already we've got already uh, solutions for for those challenges in society you know so just you know now now we've got with there is a moment right now because there is a crisis and let's just build on build on it i think that this is so you really take opportunity from from the crisis because here you can try and you can fail because there is an general crisis you know so i think uh, so i think you really to to, to find uh, to find that strength and to dare to to try and to fail and again to try and to fail and uh, yeah i think that this is this is something that we now now is the time to do it I think now it's a great time to experiment. <laughs> great, thank you, Marta. Yeah, it is really good to hear that someone else, this type of Zoom and all this online platform can benefit from COVID crisis. So yeah, it's <laughs> great to hear it. So Michael, what would be your message for the new and upcoming entrepreneurs and how we can make uh, their way in the business easier? So I already answered this in the paper that Stefan wrote. So uh, one of my, uh, uh, let's say, postament about this is be curious about knowledge. So you never know which knowledge will be uh, implemented where and how. So I, uh, I will, that is a general rule. I can give examples, but we are running out of time. So be very curious about knowledge, about anything. Uh, uh, be curious about how things work from behind because uh, patterns are everywhere. You can find a pattern that you can re implement somewhere. Regarding starting the business, I uh, usually uh, say to youngsters because I usually once a year I held a, a class on the entrepreneurship in the Faculty of Electronical Engineering. I say that establish yourself as a person first. So get a job, uh, see how things work, and then have a base that you can start on. Because when you have a base, you can easily accommodate the punches that are, are you receiving in any way in uh, financial literacy, in um, communication skills and everything so earlier when i said be curious about everything i mean about everything so learn uh good communication skills important networking skills important when you're cur curious about knowledge networking comes natural because you have a vast a majority of topics that you can speak with anyone uh, like literally anyone so that's why knowledge uh, broad knowledge is important and become expert in one thing because that one thing will uh, bring you money for you and then you you will not depend on anything to to run your social business and the uh, other the most important part for social entrepreneurs and I see that pe many people are making mistake social enterprise and the regular enterprise are the same so they're based on the same principles if you're a social enterprise, you need to pay the bills at the end of the month, just like a regular business. As we said, added value is something, but running and sustainability, it's uh, just a regular business. And uh, read uh, what uh, the ecosystem of the world created already. So you have lean startup, lean thinking, design thinking, Get familiar yourself with all those things because they help uh, about uh, how you think and how you develop your ideas. For example, uh, my girl, uh, the idea for the girl t-shirt came with a, a talk that I had in Istanbul with when I was on a wedding on a friend. So I showed the idea about on two ladies that we will start this and they said, no, no, I don't want uh, my t-shirt to be close to the neck. I want to be open because I don't want anyone to say to me that uh, can direct how I, I get dressed. And I was like, okay, why? And they explained to me, and that was uh, one of the most uh, successful product that we launched uh, 
and how I ended up on the, the wedding. I was on Startup Madeira retreat, and that was a friend that I met on Startup Madeira and invited me to the wedding. I was the only one person from all of the alumni that went to the wedding. So that means curiosity when I say it's with examples, it's a bit hard to explain, but be curious when it will happen to you, it's magical. Yeah, yeah, no, I totally agree. And then, uh, then you know, look to the old ideas, try to twist them, you know, try to improve the status quo, be disruptive, you know, and and again, that's what Mikhail was was uh, was was saying. Be curious. I mean, now there is again because of COVID, uh, the the you know, there's a lot of things online. There's a, a huge free open source, um, different, uh, different learning materials. And, you know, that I don't think we'll have uh, ever such opportunity to, to participate in conferences, events, networking, and, and be easily connect to each other uh, through all different parts of uh, Europe and, and, and globally. And I'm experiencing it and, and let alone uh, young, younger people that have more energy and, uh, and are more willing to go, go out there. So it's, uh, I think it's, it's a great time to, to really to, to, to explore a lot for free. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you both for the really great messages. And I think that at the end, we like finish the circle. We start to speak about the importance of uh, to asking, speaking to everyone, networking, using all the uh, additional the resources and uh, seminars, training. So it is great that the end we really came to the same point. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I really hope that a lot of young people who are now listening to us and who will listen later this conversation will really be more encouraged to think about it, if not to start the business. So thank you really for the great messages. And if anyone is inviting you for the wedding, go. <laughs> you should go there. <laughs> Who knows what will happen later. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Opportunities are everywhere, right? Everywhere, so exactly. <laughs> grab them when you can. Yeah, very true. And yeah, join, uh, join also you know, our events. They are also for free um, events or events of our members. You never know where you meet someone and uh, how it will go forward. Yeah, so to this, I will add, be open. Yeah. Uh, when I say be open, be open to uh, everything because uh, uh, I haven't found a way how to uh, articulate this with words but just be open if you want the change to come uh, be open for the change not willing to do the change so the change will come by itself or so when you have these are i don't know some uh, mantra words that you will hear somewhere but they work uh, when you understand what the author said uh, not uh, when you read it because Many people are reading books, but they don't understand what the books are. So uh, be open about the change. Uh, example, when you go out, uh, be open about the party uh, to make you happy. Not, uh, you need to be open to take the energy, not to uh, the energy to take over you. So Thank, thank you, Michael, for the uh, great message. Yeah, and uh, thank you. Stefan, you wanted to add something to the messages? Or I just wanted to say that uh, some things can happen to you only if you're open, to, open for them, uh, basically. Uh, as an example, I can say that our project uh, here is, um, is a, the magic of networking, let's say. Um, a, a person that we commonly know, uh, we both know, uh, basically networked with us and connect us to do this project. So yeah, that's the power of networking and being open to collaboration and partnership and uh, talking talking to somebody about ideas and uh, you know what, what everything else. So thank you guys for that and thank you for your messages. Um, I would like to to wish you a, to have a great rest of the day mm -hmm. and uh, to be open for for next events and next talks. 
and so on. Snezana, can you continue? Yeah, thank you really for your time today. And it was really a great conversation. And thanks to everyone who were listening to us this afternoon. So we just can invite you to, for the next Thursday. We are going to speak about the social innovation. So follow up again with us. And yeah, we are wishing you a good luck with all your projects in the SS and also in the three banks. We are going to follow in your, all your projects. So hope to see you again on some joint initiatives. Thanks a lot. Thanks, uh, Mikhail, as well, for uh, yeah. being here with me. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Uh, it was a pleasure to talk and uh, enjoy the discussion. Yeah, me too. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks, guys. Thank you. See you. Bye. Bye-bye. Ciao.